Right. Hello there. Um, this was originally going to be just um, in two parts about the Stang, but there was so much in the second one that I missed out, and so much more to explain um, that I had to do a third one. <laughs> so, based of all, going on to my Stang and how I use it. Um, there is another right in which I use my Stang, and that involves my Quake. Now, a lot of you would know about this right, some of you do, not very much is it heard of, but basically this is used to perform what, I, what is called the Moon Raking right. Now, this would then be, the Quake would then be filled with water, um, rested upon my stang, then at midnight, um, go into a pool or lake where the full moon shim shimmers its reflection onto the, the pool. One would then, in its reflection of the moon in the pool, hover it over the lake in order for the, the uh, fluids within the quake to be silvered, um, therefore hollowed. Uh, the term silvering is a Scottish term, meaning to literally silver something, but also it means to make holy, make holy, um, either water or whiskey or anything doing a liberation or offering. Um, and also, um, the moon making rite was originally used for healing uh, people who had bladder problems or, or um, any kind of alliance or, or general hearing. And what would happen, what would then happen was, Urine was placed in the bowl. They would have used a stick. Uh, they would have used a a, um, a horseshoe attached to a long pole. And again, what I've explained, hovering the bowl over the moonlight um, slash a reflection within that pool. That thus silvering the urine, thus then healing the person. But again, I can use that, but. I use it to hollow and bless for holy water um, in major rites. Other than that, I just use a sterling silver coin in which I dip into the water and make a holy. So that's one thing. The next, my stang is also uh, what is known as the nid, nid pole or the Niden stang. Now, in Norse, magic um you know, folklore uh, folk magic in norway a nidstang uh, was originally a horse's head attached to a long pole uh, in which it was directed um in curse to the direction of the person is and used in cursing now what i do if i wish to curse or to therefore send my familiar off to the direct person that I would place. This is my familiar by the way. I would place my skull between the stang. Well, I would tie it securely with some cord, like so, between thy stang, the tines. Then it would be thrusted into the ground, either then facing the person's house or the compass point to where the house lit. Thus, you know, spells and enchantments would then be chanted in order to cause haunting of their their home, um, to cause their, their land to be spoilt, to cause all sorts of trouble to happen in their home, hauntings, their, their land spirits be angered um, and turn against them. Everything, it's a powerful, um, device in which you know um, dark forces can be directed onto someone um, and in this case I use my familiar in this so yeah so my stang is also the nid stang um, and again whatever I use in my casual stang I use exactly the same with my grand stang as you see there. Um, again, like as in the you know many traditions, 
this would be decorated in a wreath um, along with crossed arrows um, which is sacred in our craft as well um, as arrows mean um, direction of power as depicted in Pictish artwork um, but yeah that's it really that two other things that I used my stand for um, hope you enjoy these series of videos and um, peace out